Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at a battle dress, blouse, which is something we've not looked at on the channel for a little while. I thought a bit remiss in that. I have a few in the collection and so I thought I'd dig one out for, to have a look at in some detail here on the mannequin. So what we have here is a late war production 9040 utility pattern battle dress. been slightly retailed, which we're going to have a look at as we look at this in more detail. And it's, ba it's badged to a lieutenant in the Royal Army Medical Corps. And again, we'll have a look at the details of the insignia as we move this round as well. So being 1940 utility pattern, it has lack of pleats on the pockets here. The buttons are all exposed. Obviously, it's the simplified version of battle dress introduced during the course of the Second World War. As I say, this being a very late production example, probably didn't see service during the war. And looking at the condition this is in and the fact it's been retailed, this is probably this chap's best battle dress, his walking out battle dress, if you will. So we have the exposed buttons down the front here. Obviously, the collar here has been modified. It's not been particularly retailed to be worn open. It's not been reshaped, but it has been faced with serge, as you can see. So the drill lining has been overfaced with serge material to make it a bit more attractive, a bit more aesthetic when it's worn open, as we have here. But the, the hooks, the two hooks and the corresponding eyes on the other side have been left in place. So this could, in theory, be worn closed as well. They've not removed that feature in refacing the collar. Obviously, two chest pockets there, as you can see. All of the buttons being exposed. These are the, the brown version of the, the plastic buttons introduced for use on battle dress. And then we have obviously at the waistband here, the buckle round on the side there. Very typical in terms of battle dress design there. It's not been massively retailored. At the front here, it's been taken a little bit and we'll see more of that as we move around and look at the back. But the main thing you can see at the front here and the way this has been modified is the collar. So turning the mannequin round now to have a look at the right hand side of the uniform here. You can see on the epaulets here, we have two pips for a lieutenant and then the RAMC, Royal Army Medical Corps, shoulder titles there, all in the core colours, in the, the armour service colours, which is this deep maroon. And obviously you have the, the, the pips in that colour as well. So very nice insignia. It's, I do like RAMC insignia purely from the colour it's in. It's very smart in my opinion. So RAMC insignia up on the epaulette and on the shoulder there, very neatly stitched in. We'll get a close-up of this now, or rather the other side, just to show you. I'm not going to bother showing the left-hand side because it's basically a mirror image of this. But we'll get a close-up now of the insignia on the other epaulette and on the shoulder, as you can see here. The sleeve hasn't been modified at all. You can see this a feature of battle dress that some people aren't sort of isn't isn't uh, necessarily obvious when wearing it is the fact the sleeves are actually tailored to allow the arms to bend forward and obviously this allows you to bring a rifle up to the shoulder that's the idea um, is, is to have this curve to the arm so they're actually shaped to make that movement a little bit easier and obviously they're quite baggy to give uh, freedom of movement you can see here button cuff a single button at the cuff there and then the, the cuff is lined with drill we'll see that more clearly when we turn this inside out and have a look at the interior details one final thing I'll show here is just a, a more detailed shot of the buckle here around on the side. This, of course, being the later design of buckle, which is toothed and obviously grips the waist belt a little better there. And then the waist belt just tucks through this little loop stitched onto the side there to keep the uh, loose end from flapping around. Looking at the back here, you can see this has been taken in a little bit. And you can see we have pleats running around the back here where it's been taken in a little bit at the waist. And then you have the single seam running down the back there as well. What we'll do now is turn this inside out and have a look at some of the interior details. So looking at this turned inside out, I've purposefully left the collar turned up here. So you can see where the facing material has been stitched in to face the collar in serge. And you can see that's been quite neatly done around here. Rough edge in here, but you don't see that. Otherwise, it's been done very neatly. And you can see it's just been stitched over the cotton lining there, the cotton drill lining down the front there. The cuffs are lined, as you can see. The collar is normally lined all the way around. We'll see the remainder of the lining of of that that's not been covered up around the back when we turn this round. Drill reinforcement here for where the pocket flap attaches. You have the same on this side and then you have an internal breast pocket stitched in there as well. And obviously that's been used, uh, drill has been used to reinforce where the buttonholes go here as well. You can see where the name has been written in underneath the label here. We have JDK Doors and then we actually have doors in the collar as well. And we'll get a close up of that with the label now as well. You can see the label for the battle dress here. It's a size 10 and you have the details of the sizing there manufactured by Denim 1933 Limited, and then you have the date there of 1945 at the bottom, as you can see. And then you can see the name underneath that, and then the size has also been stamped in here as well. You can see a number 10 underneath where the name has been written in. Looking at the side here, you can more clearly see the fact that the cuff is lined all the way around with drill there. You have a piece of drill reinforcing where the button attaches for the epaulette on the shoulder there as well. And you can just see the remainder of the lining of the collar coming around here 
there is drill lining all the way underneath this section of serge that's been stitched in. The entire collar on these is normally lined with drill. It's just been covered up with the extra piece of serge here that's been used to face the opening where this has been modified for wear with a shirt and tie. Looking at the back here, you can see again details of the pleats around the back here. You have the waistband again lined in drill, as you can see there. The collar lining is more clearly seen here. And again, we have doors written into the collar here in an ink pen and then the single seam running down the rear there. That's basically the details of the interior of this. We'll just get a quick close-up of the name written into the collar here as well. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, uh, there will be some more videos coming up on Battle Dress. I do have various different examples in my collection. This is a particularly nice one. I really like this. It's been sympathetically altered, shall we say, of the collar here, which is always a nice thing to see. It's always interesting seeing different examples of these and how they've been modified. Uh, quite a common late stroke post-war Thing to see, uh, particularly post-war when other patterns of battle dress were being introduced which allowed for a wearing of a shirt and tie. It's not uncommon to see battle dress retailed, earlier patterns retailed, so they can be more readily worn with a shirt and tie and they look a bit smarter uh, for having been modified. So hopefully you found it interesting looking at this. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell and the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down below as well. That's everything for this video. So, until next time, bye for now.